Pokemon Snap released on July 26, 1999 in North America, and 24 years later it still holds up in my top 5 favorite games of all time. I have many fond memories playing this game as a kid with my mom, and back then there were no internet videos to look up and find out secrets, so everything I know about this game I know from years of experience. But I haven't played this game in a few years, despite still owning it and playing the most recent entry to the franchise, but lately I've had that itch to play again. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. So today we're going to scratch that itch, but put my memory and skill to the test because we're going to make it a little bit more interesting as we're going to try and Nuzlocke this game. Now, similar to the rules of a normal mainline series game's Nuzlocke, we can only capture a Pokemon once. Except, you know, we're not doing it in a Pokeball, we're capturing it on film. But that being said, sometimes you gotta throw a few Pokeballs to get the Pokemon. So, it's not a one-off, take a picture, can't take another picture. We can take multiple pictures of that Pokemon, but because I took a picture of that Pokemon, we then are forced to submit one of those pictures. And after that, even if the Pokemon's on another stage, we can't take a picture of it again. So, you know, Pikachu's on like every single stage almost. It doesn't matter if I take a picture on the first stage, we can't take a picture on the second or the fourth. So this should be interesting. And what should actually make things a little more interesting is is there are certain rewards for hitting point milestones but I'm going in blind and I have no idea what the points are or how many Pokemon we need to take pictures of. Oak gives us the rundown and we set out for the first course, Beach, where the game forces us to take the first few pictures of some Pidgey. This means no matter what, after we clear the stage, we can't submit any Pidgey pictures again. I take a picture of Doduo, hesitate a little too long, and eventually snap a picture of Pikachu, and it's not a good one. We get a glimpse of a Lapras, snap a Butterfree, and ignore the sleeping giant as it'll only give us a question mark and then we won't be able to take a picture of it again. We Get some nice shots on Meowth posing and uh, pick up a few shots of Eevee chasing some pink ball. On our way out though, we get a few really awesome shots of Pidgey attacking Meowth. Some of the pics I took are fine, like the pics of Doduo and Eevee, and some are great, like the ones of Pidgey attacking Meowth. And some are a total waste, like the single pic I took of Pikachu. Yeah, we could have had so many better ones down the road. But I wasn't sure how many points or species I would need to unlock the second stage, and as of writing this script, it looks like it was six. And we had seven, so we could have left Pikachu for later. Now I should probably give you the rundown on how the points work in this game. There's a system in place with some multipliers, and your score is based on size, which is basically how big the Pokemon is presented in the film. Pose, it would be anything from like the Pokemon dancing or showing some sort of emotion or maybe attacking something. Technique, which is essentially the best multiplier, it just doubles your score outright. It's what you want and it's for having the Pokemon dead in the center of the picture. But there's also a few hidden ones like special which is essentially just pose but are special hidden poses like for example surfing Pikachu. And last you have same Pokemon which is obviously you have a couple of the same exact Pokemon in the picture. And that all being said we do all right on our first go on the beach. And we're just under 7,000 points needed to unlock the apple, but I don't think we could have unlocked it on stage one anyway. And our top picture was actually Pidgey, and I'm not surprised by that, but I am surprised, however, about my Lapras picture only getting 150 points, who is clearly centered and there are clearly two Lapras in frame. But with the six species collected, we unlock Tunnel. When we start up the stage, we're immediately greeted by Electrode, who explodes and should get us some good points. This explosion actually causes Kakunas to fall from the ceiling. We get a quick shot of Zubat, some mystery ball, and start taking pictures of Diglett, who every time we snap spawns more until a Doug Trio appears. There's a few more Mons on this level, but we're just gonna leave for now. Electrode nabs us a solid score, and like Lapras, I'm cheated out of some points with Kakuna. The mystery orb turns out to be a Haunter and we end the stage with 13 encounters and 28,000 points, which now unlocks apples for us. 
We then head back to the beach so we can grab a few more mons. First up is Magikarp that spawns by throwing apples in the water. We then pelt the pink ball with apples to reveal a Chansey, and we do the same thing to Kangaskhan to reveal its face for a better picture. We also save Meowth this time, and uh, he seems pretty happy about it. We head back to the tunnel to now get some snaps of Electabuzz, Magnemite, and Magneton, and to pester the Electrode causing it to explode among the next stage. We're now at 19 encounters and almost 40,000 score. We are now enter the third stage volcano and all the mons here are new so we go to town taking pictures. Rapidash, Fulpix, a Charmeleon, Magmar, a couple of Charmanders, and our first legendary encounter in Moltres. We then send Charmeleon to an early grave. Oh, no, wait, it just evolved. So, we take a few final picks of Zard, whose picture is horrible. I should have waited on that one. But we wrap this up at 26 encounters and 59,000 points. We're making pretty good progress, if I say so myself, and I still need 13,000-ish points to unlock the most important item in the game. The next stage is River and is unlocked by having 22 Pokemon in your port, so we're good to go. This is probably one of my favorite stages in the game, and to a rookie player, has a lot of really cool things to discover. I load in and start throwing apples at pretty much everything, and we get some good shots of Bulbasaur, Poliwag, Slowpoke fishing, and evolving into Slowbro. By the way, for the longest time as a kid, I genuinely thought this is how Slowpoke evolved. Like, I left my my slowpoke and shelter in the daycare for weeks trying to trigger this this right here this lie anyway we wrap up the stage and Psyduck and Shelder are our final encounters bringing us up to 32 and 71,310 points we're legit 1,190 points short of what we need at this point there are two mons left we can get a picture of and I load back in I bait out the cloister and thankfully we have enough points with just that to unlock the pester ball literally the most important item for this game i now go back to some of the older stages and pick up a scyther growlithe and arcanine metapod and this porygon also if we hit this particular porygon he comes out of the wall and flips the switch unlocking the next stage we're now at 38 encounters with 88,000 report score our next major unlock is at 130,000 points but our next stage is unlocked at 40 encounters so between the next two levels we should be fine we load up on cave and by throwing pester balls at these bulbasaur we unlock a ditto and we hit grimer three times to evolve it into a muck we also have two jigglypuff escape coughing which will help later and we get some nice shots on coughing weeping bell and then drown it forcing it to evolve i guess there must be leaf stones at the bottom of that pool we skip jinx for now and snag a few shots of Jigglypuff before we leave. Putting us at 45 encounters and just over 105,000 points. Only 25,000 more to go and Valley has a few secrets for us. My first attempt at Valley doesn't go great as I'm really trying to maximize point game. We capture some film of Squirtle, Mankey, Geodude, Sandshrew, and Graveler. Sand Slash, Staryu, Starmie, and one very god awful shot of Dratini that, because of the rules, I'm forced to use. Hopefully, this doesn't mess anything up for us. There's a few mons left in the game, so we should be fine if we do have a few mess ups like Dratini again. Thankfully, though, most of my pictures are centered well enough to get a solid showing point wise. And we're now at 100. 22,000 report score. We give Valley another go and have Mankey fling Magikarp, which we then pester up a waterfall, causing it to evolve into Gyarados. I then pester ball the Whirlpool, revealing a Dragonite that was hiding in it. 
And we fling Mankey into a button, opening up not a new level, but a new spot and new challenges for us. Professor Oak would now like us to go take pictures of random phenomena that resemble Pokemon. Once we have all six, we can then get into the final stage, but we're going to need the last item first, the Poke Flu. We submit the two photos and they both get 4,000 points apiece, meaning we've unlocked the Poke Flu. Now keep in mind all of this info is me looking up stuff currently while writing a script so this was really lucky like insanely lucky to have just enough points to unlock the last item we need however i do believe there's a weird glitch here and you can't receive two items um because we just received the ability to speed up and we should be getting the poke flute, but we don't. I go back to the beach, getting a picture of rocks that look like a Kingler and then load back in immediately after with the poke flute and get a picture of a dancing Snorlax. We head back to the tunnel and get pictures of Zapdos and a shadow that resembles a pincer. We pester ball the volcano and get a coughing like smoke cloud. Then on river, we awaken a vile plume that was blocking a rock formation that resembles a cubo. In the cave, we take a few shots of these distant star looking jewels that end up looking like a Mewtwo and awakening Articuno and finally capturing Jinx on film. This puts us at 61 of the 63 Pokemon in the game and five six of the signs discovered. We load into Valley now and get shots of Doug Trio Mountain and snap our final Pokemon Pokemon Goldeen. With all the signs being photographed, we now unlock the final stage, Rainbow Cloud. Though there's not much to this stage, it's probably the nicest looking level in the entire game, and it has some of the best music to boot. We end up finding Mew and knocking it out of its orb and get a picture, finishing our Nuzlocke of Pokemon Snap. If I was less experienced with this game, it probably would have posed a bigger challenge, although I did get very lucky with my points at crucial times, otherwise I'd have to have restarted. Regardless, this was a nice nostalgia trip and the challenge brought me a lot of fun and joy. And I want to thank you all so much for watching and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.